Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Larry. Very good evening. The Presidential Task Force at today's briefing, uh, Dr. Aliu in particular, Dr. Sonia Aliu, its national coordinator, says that the orientation agency has been doing quite a bit um, to enhance uh, awareness and enlightenment programs, uh, at, particularly at the community level. Many people will ask how, where, because if you listen to our previous speaker, uh, the public uh, health physician there, he made mention of the fact that if you just need to go out, you find that people are not, uh, are not complying, they're not obeying the protocols, and this has been consistent uh, right from when the lockdown was eased. What is your agency doing? Well, uh, that is not because the agency has not uh, done what is expected of it to do. Uh, on the scale of 1 to 10, if you ask me, I would say 95 to 98% of Nigerians are aware of COVID-19, are aware of its realities, are aware of its deadly nature. And this is just a function of how much sanitization has gone out there. If you have a small child at home that has not been going to school uh, since the, the, the lockdown, and I ask him, why are you at home and not in school? He will tell you, it's because of corona or because of COVID-19. That tells you how much sanitization has gone and how much of public enlightenment has taken place uh, uh, on, 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 on COVID-19 and its realities. However, what we are witnessing, and this is uh, uh, the, the experience of the National Orientation Agency driving from its uh, reports from the field, is that in spite of the, uh, the, 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 the awareness which has been engendered by the public enlightenment and tradition efforts of government, uh, citizens are largely in denial. And the first, because they tend to see themselves as with their risk adversity as very low. They, are, they have very low risk adversity. And for this reason, therefore, they don't want to believe that they are uh, vulnerable to being afflicted. We have passed the stage of public enlightenment. We are going into the stage of behavioral and attitudinal change. Behavioral and attitudinal change where Nigerians must have to begin to take personal responsibility. When you begin to take personal responsibility, you keep yourself safe and you also ensure that you are guaranteeing the safety of the other person with whom you are coming into contact. And this is something which the, the, uh, at various levels, at the levels of the PTF, at the levels of the National Orientation Agency, Centralization and Advocacy Business, at the level of what is being done by subnational units, you know, the states and the, in the local governments, this is being done. But what you see, however, is that uh, uh, people go about uh, everything, you know, as if, you know, business as usual. Now, the point that I, that, that I feel, and I think uh, government must have to begin to think of the possibility of imposement. I mean, the world over, every country is devising its own means by which it responds to this pandemic and the challenges that arise from the responses. In our own case, we have a very large population. Uh, 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 perhaps, I am not one of the experts, but perhaps the experts may explain that um, uh, place against our large population, the, 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 the cases that have so far been reported, below 40,000, place against a population of nearly 200 million, you may say this is actually not something that is worthy of being given attention. But the, you can also see that in the last three months, or in the last two months, how exponentially the numbers have been rising, and even that of, uh, the, of affliction and of the fatalities. So I, I, I feel that there is the need for government 
to begin to think of ways and means of enhancing moral suasion where it fails, we begin the process of impossible. And in the process of impossible, once it is within, done within the, uh, the, the, the excellent regulations and the excellent provisions of the law, definitely it will be in line with what is expected of government, protection of lives and the protection of security uh, of, of, of property. Uh, 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 but this is not to say, however, that we will relent in this. Community to community. In local languages for people to realize the dangers of not taking personal responsibility. Not to, not to know about COVID. No. The dangers of not taking personal responsibility in obeying the prevention protocols. If you do that, you save yourself, you save the other person. Secondly, let me sorry, let me interrupt you, Dr. Barry. Sorry, let me interrupt you, Dr. Barry, and, yes. and ask you this. People say that a lot of the awareness and so on is going on first in the urban areas, not in the rural areas where most of the population currently resides. That's number one. Two, that at I the community you, level. I disagree. Okay, fine. At the community level, at the community level, that a lot of individuals know about it, but that the force of community suasion and peer pressure from community uh, members has not been leveraged upon to ensure that people take responsibility for their actions. What's your reaction to that? Tell me what is happening. What is happening, Ladi? Tell me what is happening in Lagos, which is different from what is happening in Kano and what is happening in the remotest community in Jigawa or in Yobe. It is just the same attitude and the behavioral thing. If, if you take a, a walk on the street in Lagos, you see people wearing the, wear, wear, wearing the masks on their chin, you know? Or some are wearing it in the... Ta taxi drivers are hanging it in the cars so that if their passengers don't have it, they just uh, bring it and give it, out, and give it to them to hang out, so, uh, to, to, to hang on their chin, not even on their face, on, to, to cover their mouths and to, to cover their noses. So this, this tells you that... that there is definitely a widespread, widespread enlightenment and the knowledge and the awareness about the disease. What we are saying is, as in Lagos, as in Kano, as in Portiscum, as in uh, Ikene, as in uh, uh, Onimo local government, as in everywhere, the same attitude, the same uh, the behavior is being replicated and we, that's what we are seeing. We, there is no difference in what is happening between the urban and the rural communities. And this is something which is empirical, and I have this on my fingertips because it is a report I'm receiving from the field. Going forward, then, what, what are we to do? What are we to do? You talk about enforcement, at some level of enforcement, if the moral suasion and so on doesn't work. But then there are those who have pointed out, including our last speaker, that even the issue of enforcement, those to do the enforcement themselves don't seem to understand what is at stake. In this case, the security forces. During the lockdown, many vehicles were traveling from state to state. How that was happening with borders being shut remains a mystery. Uh, up until now, many uh, security agencies are out there. Many of their officers and men are out there. They are not wearing any personal protective equipment themselves. So how does one expect them to enforce it uh, against the citizens? There are, very many, there are very many centers of power locations in this country. Uh, uh, that the enforcement doesn't necessarily have to come from the police or from the army or from, the, uh, from other government agencies. Government could be one or one of the options. But there are, community, there are societal ombudsmen. There are communities that can impose their own uh, laws using their own traditional cultural methods of, 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 of social compliance. These are some of the things that we need to look at. I, I, I agree entirely with the second speaker, the doctor who spoke before me, that communities must have, to be, must have to be engaged and engaged fully so that they become part of the solution and not to be seen as a problem. Uh, what, what do resident associations, how do they enforce? How do they ensure that uh, everybody actually in the asset uh, in, in, in particular abides by the prevention protocols? How do market uh, associations or market authorities ensure that the market men and the market women who go in there every morning and every afternoon to sell uh, uh, come up with their own internally generated responses 
you know, uh, to some of this is because the issue is not only about government alone. This must be the responsibility of each and every citizen. And that is why I'm emphasizing on personal taking of responsibility so that you save yourself and you save others. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Abari, Dr. Garba Abari, Director General of the National Orientation Agency. Thank you for your time today on the program. Thank you.